Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're going to be working on a special custom project on these Allen Edmonton McTavish. So, we're going to do some fun stuff with it. Come join us and check it out. Thank you for joining us. Uh, like I said, we're going to be working on these McTavishes here. Now you can see that there doesn't seem like there's too much wear on it, but actually when you look closer there is. He's got some beat up heels, all the stitching is damaged here. Factory had some issues it looks like with their machine right here, so some of these areas are actually splitting. I can show you right here. Right there, that welt is separating. Now, for those of you who have this happen on their shoes, you might see it on the toe or the side very frequently. Um, if you're not ready to resole your shoes, you can use some contact cement and glue it all back together. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, the stitches should hold. These, however, because the way the machine stitched it from the factory, they're just not going to hold up very well. But this gentleman who whose shoes these are, he's actually the one that, if you've seen those yellow and uh Yellow and blue, right? Maze. Um, yeah, those uh, <laughs> those shoes. Uh, that's it's the same guy here. In Michigan shoes. Good old Michigan shoes that we did for him. But these ones, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit more of a St. Patrick's Day theme for him. So I'm going to be breaking these down. And after these are all broken down, I'm going to hand them off to Marcus, who's going to do a custom die job on them. Marcus, you going to be in on this video? <laughs> that might get a little bit. All right. <laughs> But we're going to be doing a number of things for these shoes. All right. Sorry, I got interrupted there with that phone call. But, yeah, these guys are going to be an interesting one. This gentleman's got like eight pairs here at the shop right now um, that we're working on. But this one, he was hoping to get done a little bit sooner than the others. So his other shoes we had to put on hold in order to get these taken care of in time for him. Since, after all, it's a St. Patrick's Day theme shoe. And it's always nice working on some of these uh, interesting custom projects, but at the same time, they definitely take up a lot more time. Um, for this one, we kind of had to figure out a few different options for different soling and everything, and I think we got a couple of good ideas in mind. So we've got the heel base off. Grab the pen here. Let's see, left foot. We'll do a McT for McTavish. Okay. Set these aside carefully so I don't puncture my hand. Now, a lot of times you guys see the Allen Edmonds shoes that have that little layer from the top lift. That's uh, to help with the adhering it properly. And so this one, however, didn't have that composite, yeah, composite rubber. It had a leather piece, which is kind of cool. All right, so get a little bit thinner on here. Loosen up all that adhesive there. It's already kind of loose as is, but we're going to be dyeing them anyway, so I'm not too worried about getting a little bit of thinner on the upper. We have to use a solvent to strip down the color here. Uh, there's my knife. Cuts right through just like butter. Just comes to show that those stitches were a little weak there on this shoe. And that can happen sometimes from the factory where the stitches are a little bit weak. It usually happens just because the machine isn't tuned up enough and uh, on top of that the company has to transition from leather to rubber uh, sole here, that rubber half sole, and uh, you have to have the proper tension set up and it looks like they just run through the stitcher without adjusting the tension part of the way through. So that's what happens. But got that off. I'll go ahead and clean up some of this cork so we can get that shank out of there. There's a wood shank that's in this one. Some of these Allen Edmonds don't have a shank in them. 
and it's typically ones that have a leather sole. And this one's got a leather rubber sole combo, so it's kind of surprise, honestly surprising in a way that there is a shank in this particular one. But that's a good thing, so. There we go. Looks like it's in good shape. Nice and sturdy, so we can still save and reuse that one. Grab my marker here again, right on here, left foot. Usually these shanks, it doesn't matter which foot they go onto, but I like to try to put them back into the shoe that they went in. And this gentleman, like I mentioned, he's got a number of other shoes. He's got a couple of shark skin Allen Edmonds. I'll see if I can do a video on that, but definitely check that out if so. Uh, it'll probably be a couple of weeks after this video is posted that I'll have that one up. So they're nothing too fancy that we're doing with those like this pair. But we'll get it all going. Man, I used a lot of glue right here for that shank. Let's see if I can pull that out. This here are chunks of glue to hold that shank in place. Now we are going to be replacing the welt on these as well. The welt is a little, a little thin in a number of the spots. And when I say thin, I guess you can reword it properly, but it's actually a little narrow. See right there, stitches are kind of hanging off almost in other words. And so at that point, if you have a pair of shoes and you want them resold, check the welt. If it's really thin and or really narrow in some of those areas, do consider the fact that if you don't replace the welt, the stitches won't turn out proper and they could even slide off the welt and just turns out bad. So at that point, I would highly recommend new welts, even though this welt still seems good. There are a few very bad spots to deal with. And if you're having a shoe customized like this one here you don't want any factory problems causing issues for the new custom job that's going to be done for it Ugh. that welt is really in there or a welt cork let's see Let me get out the rest of the cork, take it apart some more, and then we're going to remove the welt off of these guys, and they'll be ready for Marcus then. So I'll see you back here in just a little bit when it's time to remove the uh, welts off of these. All right, everyone. So we've got the cork cleaned out in there, at least as best we can. There's a few little pieces here that are still behind, but that will come out once we're kind of taking apart the welt and everything. So, the welts are stitched on, so we've got to make sure to cut through some of these stitches to get it all going. Okay. I'm going to re-angle that camera for everyone here. Maybe you'll see. Alright, so usually you'll find a split. And you can see right here. Right under that arch, close to the heel, sometimes it's here and everything. That's where the welt connects. And uh, we're having to cut the stitches open in this area right there. So we can loosen everything up. Once it's all loosened up, then we can easily start pulling it apart and just cutting right through the stitches. Okay, there we go. This is the easy part. Once we have to start stitching the welts, that's the time consuming part and it kind of screws up your hands a little bit. But we're gonna be putting on a split welt. That's what's on these here. Some people call it a storm welt. On our end, we call it split welt. You can see right here how it comes up like a wall at a 90 degree angle there. Storm welt actually has a little bit of a beading going through it. I'll show you when we get closer to doing the welts comparison side by side what it all looks like and 
and it's kind of a good idea to do the die work like Marcus will be doing on these shoes here when the welt is off also that way we're able to get the leather underneath the welt and there aren't any light spots you know getting your shoes custom dyed and everything like that is great but when you got the welt off you got a little bit more access to all these spots that up close you may notice a little bit and it's not a big issue of you know the original color showing through and that's only from up close so nobody's really going to notice it but if you're getting them resold and dyed it's usually the best time to do both at the same time that's why it works out so great marcus can do all the custom dye work and patina work we do the soles so we'll take off the sole first he does his magic and then we can finish off with what we need to and then at the very end of it all all those little minor touch-ups that may need to be done during the resole process you got the same leather care expert doing the same shoe for you with the final touches almost sometimes they on the last few stitches here they kind of double stitch it over to reinforce it which is a good thing but kind of a pain in the butt sometimes when it comes to having to take it apart I have to be a little bit more careful to make sure i don't end up cutting through anything that shouldn't be cut and just strictly the stitches and the welt is fine if i cut through that because we're replacing it anyways but there you go there's the welt and one of the other tedious jobs removing the thread so i'll show you under here right here we've got the footbed that's what that is on the inside and then you've got the gemming which is this felt material here and then right on the felt or on the gemming is the thread that we need to pull out see just pull it on out there you go after the gemming usually you have the liner or in this case you can see at the toe is the toe counter material and then you also have sometimes maybe an extra layer of something sometimes it could be an insulating material or whatever else it could be and then you've got the upper finally but that's typically how those are all stitched and sandwiched together and the whole shoe is put together that way but at this point we're pretty much done on our end at the moment i just gotta go through and pull all these stitches out and like I said, see all these little cork pieces? Those are going to be removed during the stitch pulling process because then we have a finer tool that gets in there and gets a lot of those small chunks out. It's not a big issue if any cork is left behind because after all it's cork, it's going to mold to the new piece of cork. Getting every little bit of it out can end up causing more problems than... Than we'd like later on so leaving a little bit behind is good but anyways i'll finish these up pass them off to marcus and uh we'll see you back here in a little bit when it's time to start re-welting them all right everyone so marcus has done the dye work but before i show you the shoes because i ended up having to take them home with me since they're kind of a rush pair in other words for this gentleman um it, and to have them done for St. Patrick's Day and everything for him. But I was going to show you the welt real quick. So this is uh, what's called the split welt that we've put on there. And you can see it starts out looking kind of flat, but then you pull up this flap right here, and then that goes on to the shoe like that. This traditionally is what's called a storm welt. It's got a bit of a beading right there, and it already stands up like that. So just wanted to show you guys the difference between the two right there. Uh, these are a neutral color, so there's no color added to them. So we can basically change them to whatever color we want. And that's exactly what we did on his shoes. And uh, I'll show you real quick. Sorry, Chanel went out the door. But ta -da. Marcus said he's still doing some final touches on the leather afterwards. But for now, just to give you an idea, there it is. Gold welt gold split welt in particular so we've got the uh, shanks in here and everything glued up so now i gotta go ahead and put the cork in 
Uh, that's been a mess. Uh, we're about to get hit with a snowstorm right now. And I'm having to help my mom move after work, so I haven't been able to stay late. And I've got just projects and rushes one after another. Like I, I have uh, customers that we do orthopedic lifts on their shoes and everything. And some people that we do work on their shoes literally can't walk without the shoes so unfortunately they end up taking priority sometimes on our end over other people's shoes just because it literally is a choice for them between not being able to walk and being able to walk so sometimes when those customers come in a lot of things get kind of delayed and I have a few gentlemen that brought in stuff like that we had a number of uh Customers also that come to us from chiropractors who do after an accident type of recovery as well. And uh, we have to we have to accommodate them as well because they're in recovery, so we have to do their their stuff fairly quick as well. But anyways, just giving you guys an idea of how it goes with filling in the cork here. These are just the, this is like the first layer. In other words, we have to do a second layer with this one. Usually I have that nice thick cork, but my suppliers are out of stock of it right now. So I have to use more cork and layer it in there and everything to make sure that it fills in that crevice nicely. And then I like to save these small chunks and kind of like turn it into fine powder and fill in whatever else we need to. But yep, got that taken care of for the moment. Let me go ahead and get these uh, finished up with sanding because I got to put on the midsole on there. I'm waiting for the gentleman to actually text me back to okay the midsole on it before I show all of you what it's going to be like. But for the time being, it's coming along pretty nice. Kind of like that gold. I was uh, kind of uh, skeptical about it, but worked out great. If you are wondering what I used for the gold, um, Angelus uh, metallic gold acrylic paints stuff works great but yep thought i'd show you real quick so i'll be back here in just a little bit all right everyone so it's kind of a mess here because i'm trying to get through a bunch of stuff because i gotta get going again snowstorms coming in and stuff but there you go we're gonna do the green midsole on these um obviously for saint patrick's day it's gonna kind of stand out a little bit uh, this is a new midsole from Vibram that they recently let out. Um, as you can tell, it comes in the green. It also comes in an all white. Comes in orange, blue, and red. These are from Vibram. Of course, we've got the uh, black, brown, and uh, kind of like a neutral, so like a light, almost off-white color and everything. So if you want a colored midsole, um yeah there are the colored vibram ones now that they do cost a little bit extra uh typically for these just because it is a vibram after all so vibram likes to charge a little extra on certain things more than uh more than other companies would but we could definitely put one on for you the one weird color that they didn't make which was very unusual considering after all it's vibram is yellow yellow is vibram's main logo color and they did not make a yellow one. Now I still do have some of that uh, high density EVA material that's like super, super high density. It's so dense it's equivalent to basically a midsole. So I can do a yellow still for you, it just wouldn't be one of these Vibram style ones. But there you go, it's coming along nicely. Now as far as the sole that we're putting on, it's going to be the Vibram 100 sole. And I'm actually working on something that I've been wanting to test out for a long time as far as a, a version of way to stitch this down. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this all together uh, because I got to get going really quick. I got to still go help my mom move and everything too. I want to make sure that it's all cured, but I'm taking these home with me to do the last part at home um, before stitching. And I'll show you guys how it's going to look now. That part is one of those things that, again, it's it's a first time to be done on a Vibram 100 sole, something this thick and everything. But uh, if it works, awesome. It's gonna be 
first time on one of these types of thicker soles. But if it doesn't, I didn't waste my time or your time either trying to show you on a video. But if it doesn't work out, I'll be sure to explain what I was trying to attempt. But for the time being, first I want to see how well it works out and everything. And I can't really do much until the sole is cured and everything. And kind of take it from, from there. So there we go. Got everything cut up this uh this one here, the right foot is still kind of warm, so this stuff was very stretchy. Ooh, okay, so hold it right there. Look at that. That's when it's nice and hot. Stretches out very easily, but it is going back, so watch this. Hang on, it's probably better if I do it like this. Stretch. Shrinking, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's slowly shrinking. I'll show you the other one. This one's a little bit more cooled off. That one I can't stretch quite as much. Actually, with a little force, it'll stretch still. So that's cool. But I was gonna show you real quick. It was kind of neat. Anyways, uh, that's why it was kind of an issue cutting this uh, right one there. It was still a little bit warm. I'm not cutting a five one. It was with a hooked razor, which is one of my picks right there. A lot of cobblers, if you're watching, very well worth having those blades around. Makes it very easy to cut materials that are on the thinner side like this instead of having to go to the five and one or something like that or scissors i've seen some cobblers using scissors kind of like these uh heftier blue ones that i have here it's a uh, it's a pain i don't know how you guys deal with scissors if, if you're a cobbler and you're watching and you use scissors uh, to cut midsole if you cut uh protective soles or anything like that that is the most intriguing thing to me as a cobbler in our industry like I see some cobblers do that. I'm like, um, you're either leaving way too much material behind or you are way too close to the point that I'd be worried about cutting the uppers on that. So don't know that I throw it out there that cobblers, they use scissors to cut materials like midsoles and, um, other things. And there are cobblers like that out there because I have seen them firsthand. I've worked with some of them. It's weird, super weird to me. But anyways, uh, yep, I'll let these cool off for just a second longer. I got to get these uh, sanded up anyways, and uh, we'll stick them together. I'll do that off camera because I got to get going soon. Let them cure, and when I'm at home, I'll be uh, doing a couple of things with this sole when it's on the shoe, in other words. So, yep, stay tuned for that, and I'll be sure to show you, and if it doesn't work out, I'll explain it to you. All right, everyone, so... Decided to come in. Uh, snow is coming down right now outside, but it wasn't too bad at first, so I thought I might be able to get in here for at least a few hours. And I'll show you what I'm doing right now. Well, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So, I got this one all stitched up and everything. Looks nice. Hmm? That gold and green, and the edges still need to be set in the down a little bit lighter and everything, but I did that there. See how it is? cut off a piece here everything basically made it into one of those it's hide style soles and then was able to stitch through the actual sole and everything as well so there you go that's what i'm doing here right now i'll show you what it's uh coming along because i'm towards the end i've got only four nubs left and you can see that they go all the way out to the edge and my goal is to cut off a portion of it i've got it marked down not with the pen but actually with one of our with our channeler here just to get the depth because I want it to be a little bit deeper than the channel and it's a pain in the butt because what I have to do is go through with the razor quite literally just patience a lot of hand strength and steady hand as well especially because this is really thick nubs that I'm having to cut through and everything and this was the thing that I was hoping to do at home last night but didn't quite work out because like I mentioned I was uh, need to get out of here because I was helping my mom with moving and had a bunch of stuff going on it was just one thing after another now a snowstorm and i'll show you guys what's going on maybe you might be able to see it in the background over there out the window but 
If you see white, that's the snow. Yeah. <laughs> if you just see pure white. But I'll show you guys in a little bit here. Yeah, it, it got worse. Man, and now where I live, we live in kind of like the middle of nowhere. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm just cutting it now from the side. But I live in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we don't get snow plows. Plus, it gets windy, so if we get you know on average about a foot of snow across you know our general area from denver and down south or up north or wherever our area because of the wind we get those snow drifts and so instead of a foot of snow some spots could end up having three or four feet of snow just because of snow drifts and good luck trying to get out especially because there's no snow plows coming through so all right so it's kind of like a crude finish right now and then I got to take it over to the sander and uh, kind of sand it up nicely so it's a bit smoother and not so jaggedy and rough looking. But let's move on to the sander. I also did sand out the back of the heel here. I had to use this as a pattern. Uh, this is the heels that usually goes with it, but turns out I'm out of the honey color in the heel. So Monday morning, I have to run over there and to our suppliers and grab some uh, because I thought I had some. But turns out this is a size 15 that I need and... I'm all out of 15s in those. My luck when uh, when somebody needs something kind of as a rush, everything and anything can go wrong all the time. So I'm gonna drink some of my coffee out of my Yeti mug here, and move on to the sand. So got that kind of sanded up nicely. Obviously there's still little corners, but we're still working on these shoes. So at this stage, we're gonna go ahead and stitch everything up. I got green loaded up on the top and the bottom thread. And uh, we start on the back and on the heel. In order for me to be able to get this to stitch as closely as possible to these nubs, um, well, as deep as it's supposed to go. I have to take out, take off a little portion off of my machine here. This is the part that holds the channel blade. So if you've seen some of my other videos that our machine cuts out the channel sometimes, this is the channel blade right there. So it goes like this and it cuts through it as you're stitching. But I had to remove that and the piece that holds it in place. But at this point we're gonna go ahead and stitch these guys up. quick make sure this is all tightened down cut off that thread and we're ready This is a top stitch version, obviously, so it doesn't sit inside of a channel, but considering the fact that there's a huge amount of soling here that's uh, kind of protecting it, in other words, 
we're not going to be able to channel it plus this is a bit of a softer rubber here as well uh, so it's kind of one of those things that if I do channel it, it there's a high probability that it's just going to rip through anyways but there you go now we're going to go ahead and uh, get these uh, kind of sanded up just a little bit more around the edges and uh, I can't do much until I get the heel it's snowing like crazy I'll show you guys here in just a second and I gotta get going here after a few other things that I'm working on real quick so I'll show you that snow here in just a second all right everyone so doesn't look like all that much you can see that snow outside coming down but it's coming down fast and hard as you can tell so like I said for me to get home I live about between 30 to 40 minutes away from here and everything and we live in dirt areas but it's gonna be a mess uh, if I wait too long and try to get back home. So I thought I'd show you some Colorado weather. Yesterday was actually pretty sunny. It was a, a weird day actually, because when I left the house, I'll show you guys around the shop while I'm blabbering. But when I left the house and everything, um, it was really sunny and warm. Then all of a sudden it started to rain and then started raining and snow and all of a sudden it started to snow and then it went back to sunny like crazy and that was all just on my drive here yesterday but eh, it's a mess back here i got a bunch of stuff and everything to go through but that guy whose shoes i'm working on right now I'll just show you guys real quick check these out shark skin alan edmonds he's got a black pair as well and uh, he's got these guys as well. So, yeah. Thought I'd show you guys off some of the cool stuff he's got and everything. But these ones became a rush, so I had to put, him back, put his other stuff in, back into the box for the time being. But anyways, there's Janelle. Hi. That's me, my fat butt. Apparently on the pot Hot belly cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so um i'll have to see you guys a bit later um again because of the snow coming in and everything i've got a few things i gotta touch up real quick in the back get them all prepared so that when i come back in here after all this snowstorm i can finish it all out these allen edmonds are almost done again i just gotta go and grab the heels for them and then um and then marcus is doing some final touches on the uppers from what i understand as well so we should be getting them out very quickly but we'll see you back here for you guys a few seconds for me it'll be a couple of days so see you in a few. all right my camera's dying quick but there you go i saw a snowstorm i was talking about everyone so can't really see anything all right everyone so i've got the heels on these they're curing right now so we're gonna have to trim them out and as you can tell i do the heels a little bit well actually in the back area especially i like to flare it out just in case so that i can get it as straight as possible but we've got those on. I didn't put any kind of leather uh, wedge in here or anything because this is actually the perfect height. You can see right here that this thing sits just perfectly on the back end. And so don't need to do any kind of lifting. Um, now we're actually changing out the eyelids. You can see on this one, I already got the brass ones in there. And uh, so we're gonna put them on here, but I'll show you real quick how we take the old ones out because these Allen Edmonds actually have eyelets on the inside here and they're just on the inside so you don't really see them there. So when it comes to replacing them, if you want them done as original as possible, we actually have to undo the stitching, open it up, and then take them out of the liner. But since we're putting in larger eyelets into them so that they can fit an aglet style lace, I gotta make sure that it's large enough so they gotta be a little bit on the bigger side. But to remove these we've got this uh, tool right here looks a little scary but this is what removes the old eyelets and it will stretch out the leather holes I did this side here you can see right there so it's kind of stretched out and this side is still kind of uh, nice and thin but we're, we need them to stretch out anyway since we're putting larger eyelets in and it's quite simple and just put it in like that there and then I'll show you well, actually, I'm going to do it from the top so I can let you guys see. See right there, that eyelet gets pushed out. And voila. There's that eyelet. Just bends every, bends the uh, little pieces back down a little bit so they're nice and straight. And it slides out of there easily. And we just go through all of them doing the same thing. Also, I've got these nails here on the table. 
you may see a little pile right there but that's to nail these heels from the outside here like that all around thought i'd just point that out if you're wondering about this little pile of nails here but let me go ahead and uh, take these out and then when it's time to stick the eyelets in i'll let you see that actually because i'm gonna have to switch my camera around to a different place to show you the tool that does that let me at least stick one of these uh, new eyelets in some people call them grommets uh, grommets are technically the bigger ones uh, these are eyelets here uh, all right since we're stretching out the leather a lot of times what we do we do have to punch the hole to make it a little bit larger but since they're a little bit stretched out and to keep the strength of the leather i'm going to actually stretch it just a little bit just some needle nose pliers and that way i can take one of these eyelets and push it through if you guys like that little video of that snowstorm my battery was kind of dying but i was able to record some of it it was blizzarding couldn't get it out of the house yesterday until some of the neighbors with the tractors came through and cleared things up you probably see my face i'm burnt because i got i had a shovel to get the gate opened up and everything go so we got that eyelet in now we just got to press it out and i'll readjust the camera so that you can see how the little press tool works on it all right everybody so we're over at the uh, tenor uh, tenor table here that's between me and janelle and we've got this device here this is uh the press that we use to press out these eyelets we've got different size attachment pieces and everything that go in there oh, showing it upside down but I've got the one that we're using already on here since I did the other shoe and it's quite simple you've got this piece right here this is a spring loaded part that goes on the outside edge you can see that there's like a little divot in there and then the top one I'll show you real quick oh come on screws in but it presses a it presses out the back side so when you press it down it goes like that and just presses it all securely and nicely in there so i thought i'd show you guys real quick i have this other one here behind it the gray one that one is actually for a different type of eyelet that we use for um uh, kydex holsters and knife sheaths and stuff it has a little bit more power but this one we just need a little bit of pressure there we go so and it presses out that eyelet like that see how it's all bent Right there, it pretty much like makes them in, makes the uh, corners into little teeth, so it doesn't twist or anything like that, and digs in nice and securely. And then I've had somebody point out to me it was another cobbler, um, but you might see a little bit of a ring around here, and this will go away very quickly. A little bit of buffing will will remove a lot of that ring right there on the outside edge, and then after you get some laces in there and you wear it once or twice, that's going to be gone as well. So if you ever see a ring around the uh, eyelid itself it's nothing too concerning it's just part of the press process now typically when we replace the original eyelets on the liner here you don't really see it all that much because it's on the inside but on these ones that go on top that are larger you might see a little bit of a ring don't don't get frustrated or anything it'll go away fairly quick so i'm gonna go ahead and do all of these really fast because again these shoes we have to kind of be a little bit quicker on and i talk too much in my videos so i gotta finish them out i'm gonna go ahead and trim out and sand the edges here and get it going so we'll see you back here in just a little bit all right everyone so i finished out the edges marcus finished out the work on the uppers and these started out black so now they're green with gold welt split welt uh, green midsole there's a little bit of a uh, golding flaking to it but I noticed that when I was applying the gold it kind of helped darken up that green just a little bit because it was a little bit bright and then we've got the uh, honey vibram 100 soles that were you know cut out on the edges so that we can stitch the whole sole on got everything nailed on on that heel as well and we've got the brass eyelets there and I do like like you might be able to see a little bit around the brass eyelets there's a little bit of color variant coming through right there by the eyelets that Marcus left behind and it kind of like gives it that nice depth and everything so it's not like a solid green and uh, it looks to me it looks amazing 
I don't know what you guys think, but comment down below what you guys think. I gotta get these packed up and shipped out right now, basically, because as you can tell with that snowstorm, we got delayed. Even our UPS trucks weren't going around uh, and everything as we were hoping to get these done in time for St. Patrick's Day. And uh, it just was not working out. But at least he's gonna have them ready for the weekend. And I'm hoping I have this video finished out and edited on St. Patrick's Day. So hopefully that worked out. We'll see how it goes. If not, then it'll be within the next few days after St. Patrick's Day or something. But anyways, that's the process of these. Some custom shoes. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell icon. If you have any other larger or major questions, please email or call, leaving them in the comment section below. There's so many comments that it's hard to keep up with and everything. But, uh, yep, Marcus, he's heading out. We did it. Go, Joe. Yep, uh, going, man, me too. But, uh, making a lot of noise moving that camera there, but right there you go. So if you want custom dye work, check out Marcus's uh, Instagram and his Facebook. I'll link that down below. And um, that was him leaving. Check that, definitely check that out. I got sidetracked there. And uh, otherwise, if you want any kind of soul work done, we do some interesting stuff sometimes. So St. Patrick's, St. Patrick Day themed Alan Edmund um, McTavish. It's an awesome, awesome looking shoe. I would wear these. All right. Enjoy the pictures at the end and uh, see some close-ups of it. We'll see you next time.